Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Tierney, and members of the subcommittee. Last week I testified before this subcommittee that SIGAR had serious concerns about how SISTICA has managed and accounted for the fuel provided to the Afghan Army. Despite these problems, SISTICA still plans to increase annual funding for the Afghan Army fuel by $212 million per year and is pushing forward with the transfer of fuel responsibilities and funding to the Afghan Army. We believe there is no basis for either decision, and I continue to urge CSTICA to halt its plan to increase fuel funding until it develops a better process for determining fuel needs, establish a comprehensive action plan to improve fuel accountability, and delay transferring fuel responsibilities and funding to the Afghan Army until the problems we have identified are fixed. Now let me briefly update you on the destruction of records issue. First of all, SIGAR's investigation have identified and begun interviewing individuals located in the United States, Afghanistan, United Kingdom, and Belgium who were involved in this matter. We have confirmed that shredding did indeed take place and have identified two Air Force officers who admitted to destroying documents covering the time periods of February 2010 to February 2011. According to these officers, they obtained supervisory approval to shred the documents because they, they did not have adequate storage space. They also claimed that they saved them in an electronic format. Our investigators are now working to locate those electronic records to review to see if they are actually the records in question. These are the records, of course, that we requested from uh, in, in, in February of this year. In addition, just this Tuesday, CSTICA provided our auditors in Kabul with a CD which they claim contains 97 percent of the documents we had requested for the time period of March 2011 to March 2012. As you can recall from my testimony last week, that CSTICA had promised our auditors that they had complete records for the time period of March 2011 to March 2012. However, when they turned the records over to us and we did a sample, half of the documents were missing. Nevertheless, our auditors are now reviewing this new disk uh, to ascertain whether it contains complete and accurate copies of the records we requested. Now, regarding the bulk of the records, those prior to February 2010, we still do not know what happened to them. See, Sticka tells us that uh, it tells our auditors in Kabul that they have located additional hard copies of the records, including some prior to February 2010, which we intend to examine. Let me just say at this point, see, Sticka's handling of its records is deeply troubling and to us raises questions about their ability to perform this serious function. It appears it has to take two congressional hearings, six months of IG requests, an interim audit report, a management alert letter, letter and my personal meeting with every senior military official in Afghanistan before C. Sticker deigns to seriously take our request for records uh, as something they should respond to. We find that very troubling. Now, let us also update you on other de de developments since our last testimony last week. C. Sticker informed us of the changes to their plans to transfer responsibilities to the Afghan government. Subsequent to our testimony, CSTICA now says they are going to revise the amount of funding it plans to provide directly to the Afghan government from two-thirds of total funding to one-third. The time frame for transferring that fuel has also changed. It appears in a meeting, again, subsequent to our testimony, that the Afghan Ministry of Defense has said they can't handle this new mission until uh, March of 2013. Although we think this is a good move to delay, 
were surprised that apparently C. Sticken never talked to the Afghan ministry about this important function until subsequent to the hearing. These developments indicate that C. Sticker is perhaps approaching the transition to Afghan-run logistics more cautiously than before. Unfortunately, we know from our audit work and the work of others, including the Army Audit Agency, that C. Sticker has struggled with direct assistance in the past. As I mentioned last week, the Army Audit Agency reported in February 2012 that C. Sticker's standard operating procedure for making direct contributions to the Afghan National Security Forces did not provide solid quality control, a quality control process. SIGAR itself reported in 2011 that C. Sticker's efforts to help the Afghan Ministry of Interior develop and implement a personnel management system to account for the Afghan National Police workforce and payroll was unsuccessful. Providing direct assistance to the Afghan government is a critical part of handling responsibility for the Afghan reconstruction, excuse me, for the reconstruction effort over to the Afghans. But moving forward with direct contributions in face of the serious problems that C. Sticker itself has encountered in its fuel programs reconfirms our belief that transferring funding responsibility in January is doubling down on a very risky bet. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and uh, uh, Ranking Member. I'm open to any questions.